this is Crystal Vaness with Mac Kiteboarding checking in. We are in transit once again today. Right now I'm on my way up to Banff to do a bit of hiking and then uh, tomorrow morning I'm flying back to Vancouver and heading up to Squamish for another week of wind. On today's vlog, we're going to talk about how to choose the perfect kiteboard for you, your size, your body and your style of riding. Uh, and we're also going to be checking out my old stomping grounds here in Calgary. This place has kind of been a launching pad for my life and um, going to go check out the mountains, my favorite hike, sleeping under the stars tonight, uh, and then, yeah, headed back to uh, BC tomorrow. All right, let's go for an adventure. So many of you don't know this about me, but I used to own a small business in Canada, or part of it, and this is it. Uh, liquidation, discount retail. So I'm back here in my old stomping grounds and I thought I'd stop by and see if they had uh, any clothes that I could add to my summer wardrobe. Check it out! Bikinis! Bikinis! More bikinis. Whoa, this one looks fun. Yeah, so one of the keys to traveling time and living out of a carry-on is you kind of have to switch your clothes out when the season switches. So I had to switch to summer clothes um, and you know it's not really affordable to buy full price clothes all the time so try your discount shops or liquidations. Um, you might find some good stuff in there. Uh, I'm not really sure if those bikinis will stay on kiting. I mean I'll definitely give it a try but uh, I don't spend all of my time in the water on a board so it's always good to have some fun bikinis. 2,500 square miles of unrelenting nature. Banff National Park is home to countless trails and waterfalls. Established in 1885, it's the oldest national park in the Rocky Mountains. Being here, in a way, feels like the ocean. The vastness of these places makes you feel small, yet uplifted and hopeful all at once. With our busy work days, it's important to take time out to just be in our natural element. <laughs> Reflecting in my home city has been nothing short of cathartic for me. That said, I'm ready to get back to crisp waters and howling wind of the Pacific Northwest. Oh my god, look at this gorgeous view. Uh, so yesterday's hike was amazing uh, and I got to go camping with some friends and wake up in the mountains by the lake under a beautiful, beautiful, fresh sky. Um, so I'm on my way to the airport now and hopping on a plane to Squamish. Vancouver just picked up a rental car and they were out of the one that I rented so they upgraded me to this massive beast it's like a seven-seater oh my god I don't even know how I'm gonna drive apart this creature um, but yeah let's go up to Squamish it's pretty cloudy today so I don't know if it's gonna be windy but we can talk about what kind of kiteboard to buy when you're looking for a kiteboard hey this is Crystal Vanessa with Mac Kiteboarding and today we are going to talk about what to look for when you are buying a twin tip kiteboard we'll talk about what type of things come into play when choosing your board like board size, rider size, wind and water conditions, skill level, riding style, and things like boots versus foot straps. So let's get into it. Let's start with size. The first thing that most kiteboarders try to figure out is what size of board works best. And for beginners, the bigger the better. When you're learning to ride, the bigger your board, the easier it will be for you to learn. More surface area means you can get up and riding and upwind much easier. More advanced riders who have their technique on lock may be able to get a little more creative with board sizes and may choose a board that is more suited to tricks and speed than it is to free riding. Remember, when we're talking about board size, we're talking about surface area. And so when you're trying to calculate the size of your board, you have to look at the length times width and do the math because a board that is longer than another board may not actually be bigger. For example, a board that is a 133 by 42 is actually larger than a board that is a 136 by 40. Remember, knowing the surface area of your board is key in understanding the actual size of your board. Obviously, smaller riders can ride smaller boards, whereas a bigger or heavier rider will require a bigger board. Uh, there is nothing more frustrating than riding a board that is too small for you, trust me. So wind and water conditions also come into play here. For example, when it comes to wind, if you're in a light wind spot, you will pretty much require a larger board to get up and get going. 
if you're in a big wind spot, you may be all right with a smaller board, especially if you're into things like big air. What's happening on the water may affect how you choose your board as well. So for example, if you're in a very flat water spot, you can ride basically any kind of board, including a really high rocker board. So what rocker does is if you have a high rocker board with a lot of flex, um, there is less board surface area in contact with the water. And the benefit of having a board with high rocker and flex is it's a lot more comfortable to ride. Unfortunately, uh, the disadvantage comes when you're riding in conditions that are choppy and wavy. High rocker boards have less board in contact with the water, so you just have a little bit less grip and a little less control. So, a flatter and stiffer board with a little less rocker works a lot better and gives you a bit of that extra pop when you're ready to start doing jumps and tricks, which brings us to riding style. The type of riding that you want to do will determine the board you want to ride. For example, if you're a big air rider, you're going to have a different kind of board than if you are a freestyle rider. And if you are a beginner rider, you'll have a very different board from if you are an advanced rider. So, the key to making your kiteboarding life a little easier is to choose a board that is right for you today and right for the riding style that you're working towards. What kind of riding do you want to be doing? If you're going to get into big air and board offs, you may want a smaller board so you can whip it off and spin it around. But if you want to get into unhooked freestyle and wigstyle riding, you'll probably want a bigger board to get that extra pop. There is an age-old debate on whether you should be riding foot straps or wakeboard style boots or binding. So in basically every case, foot straps are recommended. And especially if you're learning, when you're as a beginner rider, uh, being able to get in and out of the board easily is critical. Uh, foot straps are great for you know, sharing. If you want to share your board, you can adjust it to fit other people. Uh, they're great if you ever want to get into board offs because you can't really take these babies off in the air. And they're, they're safe. They're much safer, they're easy to get out of, you're much less likely to get injured in foot straps. So, being, being strapped into your board and not able to easily remove it can get a bit hairy, especially in hectic launch spots. So, uh, when it comes to riding in wakeboard style boots or bindings, really the only recommended time would be if you want to get into unhooked and freestyle tricks. Uh, but keep in mind that there's a learning curve for riding with boots. Uh, for example, you can't take your board off when you're in trouble. It's not that easy. So if you want to consider riding boots, something to try first is ride as if you can't take your board off. Like ride your foot straps as if they are attached to you, locked solid on you. If you crash, can't take your board off. If you get dumped by a wave, can't take your board off. So test it out, see how it feels. But in most cases, foot straps are just the way to go. I mean, this is kiteboarding, not wakeboarding. Uh, there's a reason we have different boards. Finding the right kiteboard for you is a bit of a Goldilocks story. So I am on my fourth kiteboard in uh, just over two years of riding. And it was, it was a bit of a story, it was a bit of a journey. My first kiteboard was a 128 North Soleil and it was beautiful. She was a, she was a beautiful blue, gorgeous little board. Uh, 128 though, and sadly a little bit too small. I didn't really know better. Um, and so I got a board that was quite a bit too small for my skill level and possibly even my size. Now that board got me through. It got me through my first year of riding and she was awesome. Being on a board a bit too small for me allowed me to really refine my technique because I kind of needed to, uh, but it was almost impossible when I was light wind or underpowered. Uh, my second board was a 133 tone of pop. Now this was a super cool board, but very high rocker line and a very heavy board. And when I was riding in uh, the Dominican Republic in choppy water, I was having a bit of trouble with the lower surface area and also my skill level just wasn't quite high enough to use a board with that much rocker in those water conditions. So I have two boards right now. I have my 136 Liquid Force Element and I have a 138 Slingshot Vision. So I won the Slingshot Vision at a competition, Bridge of the Gods, and um, it's an awesome board. It's like a super easy free ride board. It's kind of a good hybrid, like I can use it for tricks and wake style. Uh, and it's a 138, which is maybe a little bit bigger than I'm used to, but definitely rideable. So my everyday board is my 136 Liquid Force Element, and this board is absolutely awesome. At 136, the board is just the right size uh, to give me a little extra pop for unhooked tricks. Um, but it's also light enough that I can get some big airs on it. It's got a great grind base, which means I could take this board to the cable park uh, and also rough it up a bit on the rocks at the beach. So yeah, Liquid Force Element, I absolutely love this board. It's awesome. This has been Crystal Vaness with Mac Kiteboarding. If you have any questions about your kiteboard and what board to buy, ask in the comments. We would love to help you find your Goldilocks board. So have fun, have a great session. I'll see you on the water.